Hello and welcome to the News Click Studios in New Delhi. I'm Siddhant Ani and with me as always is Leslie Xavier. We're talking about sport and uh, slightly serious but not surprising situation. Uh, it seems that English cricket is institutionally racist. Uh, why, Leslie, are we not surprised by this little revelation that has come from actually quite an emotional sort of outpouring of uh, sentiment of, I guess, experience yeah. uh, that this cricketer has gone through. Asim Rafiq we are talking about yeah. and uh, apparently one of the most talented cricketers of the generation. The English system had tremendous faith on him. He was the under-19 skipper. He skippered uh, a lot of star players who are now Joe, Joe Root included. Mm. And then somehow his career uh, with the club, Yorkshire, it it more or less bordered on, I mean, he was playing well, but it just didn't take off the way it was expected. And then now we have come to know that he was suffering there mm. on various levels mm. and racism being what he has alleged and institutional racism that yeah. too. So it, it is a larger problem when you look at it because he's, he's blamed the club and the entire setup of the club of racism. Yeah. And uh, see, previously you know, quite strong testimony actually made in front of a standing committee standing of parliament. Parliament. Yeah. So, and he has been outspoken in the media also. In fact, yeah. it first came out in 2020 yeah. uh, in an interview, and then over the course of the last two years, he has been speaking on various pla uh, at various platforms and uh, presenting his case and presenting and fighting his case. He is fighting for a larger cause. He says because it's it's very clear that he's. I mean, when you look at his career, he's, he's not standing to gain anything in the cricket sense of it. He's, mm. he's, he's fighting for a larger cause here. Mm. He's fighting for the future of uh, Asian cricketers and black cricketers in, in, in England. Yeah. And you mentioned that English cricket, but I would probably refrain from putting a blanket blame on English cricket because England and Wales cricket board have come forward and banned Yorkshire from staging any international matches. Mm. So it is very clear that they are uh, trying to uh, manage, so manage, the the, manage the situation. And also they are acting in tune with what is the general uh, trend in which a administrative body should act in, in case of such situations because yeah. the world has moved on from where Yorkshire is clearly stuck. And Actually, not so much because, like, as our friend Weber Bhaganandan was saying, across the road from Yorkshire County, mm -hmm. where this cricket is happening, is Leeds United. Yeah. Where a uh, culture of inclusion mm -hmm. and participation and uh, widening the scope yeah. is very much in play. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not about, a, I, I think, a single place. Yeah. I think it, uh, I, I mean, I. You are saying that you will not give that blanket sort of um, comment. Comment on, on English on, cricket. On English cricket. Yeah. Uh, but I think my take on this is pretty much that it is institutional. And particularly because I am coming from a background also of uh, football. Mm. Where South Asian people particularly. Yeah. Actually, n no, not just South Asian people. But where racism is deeply sort of entrenched in the system. Mm -hmm. So, back in 2018 when the World Cup was on, the last World Cup, uh, I was having a conversation with some people, including some former, uh, I think Michael Chopra was one of the first mm -hmm. uh, South Asian origin players to play at a Premier Division club, uh, Premier League club. And he had a different understanding of it. But several others that I did speak to said that how coaches approach things is pretty clear cut. First, they look at the black kids mm -hmm. um, because that's the stereotype, yeah. right? Physicality, etc., yeah. uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Then they look at the white kids, and then comes everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the consequences of this uh, idea mm -hmm. of how people play a sport or yeah. approach a sport mm -hmm. that has led to the fact that there are almost none, no South Asians, mm -hmm. despite the fact that there are large populations, I, I suppose, a, a large minority in the United Kingdom. They are not represented. 
they are represented in parliament they are represented in business they are represented in film but they are not represented in sport and cricket was supposed to be an exception because where do you go when you need a spinner yeah right so, so yeah so exactly so uh, football's dynamic is uh, like you said there are a certain level of stereotype and all stereotyping happening as far as races and uh, kids and how the potential of those kids to reach at the higher level yeah. so coaches are going by that but uh, i'm also not 100% sure whether they are very uh subjective about it because as far as a coach in an institution or a junior program in a club is concerned mm. they they would have their set parameters and mm. they would measure the players by that mm. you can't stop a talented player from going up mm. and as far as i see and i have had discussions of uh, of generally uh asian or black players coming into various sport including motorsport and surprisingly and from from journalists from africa and all that they in fact i wrote a story about louis hamilton and how formula 1 or generally motorsport in general is not mm. uh, open towards accepting black drivers or they mm. just don't come up at all yeah. and uh, they said that maybe it's because simply we are not interested in motorsport mm. and it's not there culturally mm. we play basketball we play football we play so i mean soccer football yeah or pro football american football yeah. and many other game which which the, which the uh, black people are strong but then they i'm sure many tennis players are there who just don't reach up and whether it's it's systemic or whether it's genetic factor these are larger larger questions but mm. uh, as far as cricket is concerned when uh, asian players are known to be great and when discrimination or racism happen then it's a, it's a, it's a larger problem it's mm. it's beyond sport dynamics it's mm. so in that way this is more sinister than what happens in the football playing ground yeah. at the, at a junior level mm. and i didn't uh, try to negate the fact that it's institutional but we are talking about a specific club here so i uh, i was unsure whether we should blame the english and wales cricket board or the cricket establishment in general in mm. in england for racism mm. because i feel that there are many institutions like you mentioned leeds across mm. and uh, who have who have tried to get rid of that baggage yeah. and successfully so too so uh, change is happening but yorkshire is stuck somewhere and yorkshire is stuck so much that they are unwilling to make those changes mm. that's why a spate of uh, resignations have happened in the last two weeks or so uh where club officials have resigned uh, i mean protesting against the club stand mm. jo root has come out in in uh, with the statement uh, and he feels that it has shaken english cricket as a whole yeah. uh, and so yeah. uh, because it's uh you, you are looking at a sport which is displaying solidarity towards uh, mm. uh black lives black matter lives movement <clears throat> at the highest stage possible yeah. and then you are looking at uh the sports uh, the the games traditional home yeah and these things happen over there so that's that's i mean maybe uh, in the in the in the coming days we will see icc also stepping in and uh, looking at it into a, a as a very serious uh, matter that needs to be resolved and not just an internal problem of mm. the club or mm. of the country because yeah. this, this is a larger problem which may shake the growth of cricket into newer markets into the us that that we are talking about yeah so yeah, yeah no fair enough and uh, i have to say that like it's extremely important and valuable that these conversations are happening yeah that parliament has taken cognizance of it that he's uh, gone there and made a statement where he's unequivocally stating what he has been through and uh, of course that's bound to result in some kind of change hopefully yeah. that's the state of the society in general in in in, in england i am reckoning society and the political state of being of the country mm. uh, whatever the shortcomings are mm. we, these kind of discussions will never happen in india it's not mm. happening in india mm. which is which is unfortunate because india's uh, problem is different yeah and uh, so we are talking about a state team where 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 there were allegations of, uh, towards a player of wasinjafer's mm. stature mm. and 
we have MPs who are heading the board, we have, we have politicians who are on top of all the, I mean, politicians are cross parties. Yep. It's not like yep. the ruling party uh, politicians are there at the helm. Yeah, there, it's there, not there are, like one yeah. sort of yeah, I ideology. And they, uh, it's like, and they cover the ranks. Yeah. It's not like that. So yeah. uh, anybody could have stood up and said this and brought up, brought this out, uh, out as a topic of discussion at the parliament or at, at a larger level on a larger scale. Never happened. Hmm. So, uh, so I, I would, I'm happy in that sense that there are things that are happen, uh, that are happening. Measures have been taken, mm. and over the course of the next two, I mean, uh, couple of months, we'll see where it will head. And as far as uh, Asim's uh, uh, statements are concerned, recently he feel that, uh, and already it has happened. Many players would come in, uh, many players who have suffered, and they, this would become a larger. Uh, uh, issue where, I mean, things will cascade into a larger movement that will clean cricket, Engl yeah. England cricket to start with, and yeah. let's see if it's if it has its impacts on the rest of the world. Ha, rest of the world or not, but at least it's, I think it's bound to have some kind of positive impact on English cricket for sure. And the other thing I would want to see is probably some positive change happening in South Africa as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> We've had, uh, we talked about, I think, on the show. Also. Yeah. Quinton de Kock and, and that whole episode and, and various other things that are involved and hopefully yeah. we'll get into that. Uh, so, you owe us one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so I think that pretty much uh, takes care of that part of uh, the show for us today. Uh, what are we moving on to next? Rohit Sharma is oh, yeah. <laughs> having his first assignment as yes. officially as the main, I mean the permanent captain, captain of, of the yeah. India T20 team. Yeah. And, and Rahul Dravid's first yeah. assignment. So I believe that you are a big Rohit Sharma fan. I'm a big Rahul Dravid fan. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this yeah. Dravidian era in yeah. Indian cricket because Dravid is, is at the helm of all three teams. So yeah. you would have a larger say for the, I mean, hopefully yeah. for the next few years. Yeah. I don't, I, I think in my mind, Anil Kumble was the most underrated captain that we've ever had. Uh, maybe ever is a sort of strong word to use. But Raul David, a uh, fine cricketing brain, uh, reasonably well-regarded human being, uh, respected, I think, across. Yeah. Uh, what do you think he's going to bring after the Ravi Shastri era, which has been quite, lots of talking points, but also quite successful for Indian cricket? Uh, uh, Ravi Shastri was managing mm. because he when he got into the helm of of the indian cricket team he didn't have a stake in the in the future bunch mm. but rahul ravid comes with that stake because he has been the junior team uh, yeah. coach for a while he has yeah. worked in the nca yeah. for a while with these players so yeah. a lot of youngsters including ones in the team some of them in the team they are all uh, they are all had stints under rahul ravid at, at various times and they all have come out and said things in the media about how approachable he is, about mm. a lot of things. So, uh, he's a statesman. So, he comes in as a different personality. You mentioned Kumble. So, Kumble's stint as a coach is, is, is uh, should be mentioned now because he was, he took charge of, uh, as, a, as coach and then Ravi Shastri took over and the circumstances which, which were not so great yeah. and there was a power struggle between him and the skipper. So, mm. a different personality, Anil Kumble, great cricketing mind but probably not as, uh, not a great statesman as, as uh, Rahul Dravid. So, mm. that is that is one major difference I see between these two and that is what probably Dravid will bring into the table because he has to do a lot of managing here because you are looking at I mean, I'm announcing it a little early, but uh, earlier. But as 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 uh, in, as as it is in sport, the transition has to be pre-planned mm. for. And mm. in a couple of years, the Indian team's transition to the next generation will be in full force. Yeah. And uh, that's the main thing that I have a problem with. Uh, Rohit Sharma will get into that as skipper. We'll get mm. into that mm. in a bit. Mm. But sticking to Dravid, so his first press conference happened yesterday, and. Mm. Uh, uh, and I'm glad that he's not just talking about the series ahead, uh, mm. which is against New Zealand. We have three T20 matches and then the two test matches, which is mm. a good series to watch out watch. for because yeah. test final 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there is. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> so I'm sure there will be a lot of advertis <laughs> advertisement yeah. uh, saying payback and all yeah, those things. Yeah. But let's see how that that will yeah, plan, pan out. Yeah. So Dravid has said about players, importance of players needing to be rested, and especially considering the situation of bubbles and how fatigue. So mm. he's probably hinting at World Cup debacle mm. and mm. maybe something of that was in mm. in play. Mm. He has also. Categorically denied the fact that he will have three separate teams for mm. the for the three formats. It, uh, that is that is again a logical thing because we have players overlapping in all three segments. You yeah. can't, for instance, replace a Bumrah yeah. just because he's a great bowler, but he, he in the death overs in T20, but mm. he's also a great bowler, a Test bowler. He's India's best at Absolutely. this point. So, yeah. so that kind of overlap happens. So it's pretty practical about that aspect. But at the same time, he is also mentioning a kind of an approach change, a philosophy change as far as T20 format, mm -hmm. or I guess he would be looking at all three formats, right? Yeah. Uh, where he doesn't want to fo follow a team's template, any team for that matter. Mm -hmm. He wants to create a strictly Indian template. Mm -hmm. And he also understands the fact that <coughs> players who perform at IPL or Syed Mushtaq Ali, mm -hmm. they needn't translate that into the international stage playing the same role because mm. in the Indian team setup the roles might be defined Different. differently. Yeah, yeah. So all these ideas he has in mind and Roy Sharma has, I mean in that discussion in that press conference Roy Sharma has also shown signs that he is on the same page on the same uh, with, with Rahul Ravid. So I guess the the uh, at the start, uh, like you cl using cricketing cliche, the partnership looks promising. <laughs> They're middling the ball. <laughs> uh, it's it's all, I mean, discussions and talk though. Yeah. So yeah. let's see. So we can't judge them by by the series either. We'll have to judge them over the course over of time. the next next. Yeah. That's why I'm keen that Dravid sticks to a larger uh, uh, period. So also a larger plan. Larger plan, yeah. and and then see. So larger plan might include certain shaking up of of the seniors as well. Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, that's that's, yeah. Definitely. So that's that's what I'm looking at, and yeah, getting into Rohit Sharma's captaincy again. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's uh, I feel that it's it's a little too late for him to become the Indian skipper, and uh, BCCI and Rahul Ravid and him obviously should sit around in in. I mean, in the first place, he shouldn't have been appointed as keeper uh, because if you are forward looking, then I would want uh, a younger, talented, talented as in talented leadership quality wise player to have that kind of a say. But yeah, I, I believe you have a different take on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love Ruth, yeah. Uh, anyone who waits a double hundred like that, I mean, like there's no, even if it's for one game, one series, whatever mm. it is, I think. Uh, a chance at captaining India and also I have slightly different opinions on what uh, team captaincy means mm -hmm. in this context. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I come from a football background and mm -hmm. so I have no understanding of it and it may be an absolutely irrelevant perspective but I do wish him very well. I don't want to get more into it because like it's really quite a subjective issue. It is a subjective yeah. issue. And I think that while I take your point about transitioning from younger players to older players or older players to younger players and a generational shift and all of that. But I think Rohit has this sort of innate, uh, it's, it's not ability but it's personality mm -mm. to relate to both sides uh, without being so in your face that mm -hmm. it's all about him. Yeah. So I think... Uh, in terms of the dressing room, I think that will have some kind of uh, positive impact. Mm -hmm. I hope, at least. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how long it will last and mm -hmm. we'll see about all of those things. I think it's time that like someone who is not a batting cricketer uh, assumes a captaincy and a leadership role in the team. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've always been an advocate of this. <laughs> Why and, that happens? Yeah, but, uh, but across world cricket, it's it's a different trend altogether. Yeah, Why absolutely. that happens, I don't yeah. get it like, yeah. So, again, coming back to football, um, you see many goalkeepers that are captains. Mm -hmm. You see many full-backs that are captains or centre-backs. Uh, you see some midfielders that are captains. There's hardly ever a striker except our captain leader legend 
who is captain leader legend mm. <laughs> uh, playing that role yeah. right and there is a reason for it yeah uh, if you are at that end of the pitch i yeah, guess you see it from reading, that perspective yeah. yeah so very different sport so perhaps not pertinent to make so many comparisons mm-hmm. but i do think that like the this batting heavy approach or batting centric approach needs to change and that's why i also said kumble as captain and coach and all mm-hmm. those things um we'll but see, we'll see from legendary captain of india he was a wicket keeper first and a batter second yeah, and wicket yeah. keeper is like the goalkeeper yeah, you yeah, get absolutely. the entire perspective so Full that uh, that yeah. advantage we saw uh, yeah. on on the playing field yeah. but uh, an intelligent wicket keeper yeah. so that's key so uh, i believe and david also kept yeah kept yeah. yeah so i i believe in that that it should be the player and his ability as a leader mm. uh, that should be the criteria not not what batting or bowling or whatever yeah. but yeah there are we have missed out on like for instance australia missed out on their best ever possibly their best ever skipper which was shane won because mm. of disciplinary problems mm. but mm. yeah so and he has shown time and again the game intelligence that he possesses yeah. Uh, yeah. while playing under various captains so and i agree completely with your personality thing uh, remark on rohit sharma he asked that uh, i mean i mean he gets everybody to be at ease yeah. which was not the case all the time with virat kohli yeah. so so again two different styles of captaincy so absolutely so let's yeah. see how it goes yeah things to also look forward to yeah for us it's at early. least yeah. as relative outsiders yeah. <laughs> in this whole game uh but okay finally then we're talking about boxing boxing uh, yes. which we did on the last show as well mm-hmm. uh but things have changed since has changed <laughs> and things have changed thick and fast and uh, i just can't believe that we were expecting the boxing federation of india to accommodate mericom but it seems god himself boxing <laughs> gods are involved in this is as well so and uh, covid 19 <laughs> so uh abs uh, postponed the world championship that was supposed to happen in the first week of december in turkey mm. to uh, by 3 months for now because turkey the covid situation is a little worse 25000 yeah. cases, uh, cases per day as we speak so mm. uh, uh, that has opened up the selection uh, scenario. dynamic scenario mm. uh, national championship happened last month so obviously in a sport like boxing you mm. can't go by that selection that mm. bunch for a tournament that is happening four months five months later yeah. anything can happen injuries yeah. form uh, so it's only fair that there should be a selection trial and yeah. that means uh, mericom would be fighting the trials for sure mm. and uh, also the young yeah, yeah the young boxer who wanted to have a fight with lovelina she may also get a, mm. uh, get a shot at that mm. because again lovelina's olympic medal would have become old by then right though we tend to uh, celebrate olympic medals for, <laughs> for eternity yeah. but but realistically speaking there should be mm. a trial and and uh, yeah and I, i agree with that but there should be a uh, mm. trial no doubt and for me like lovelina is one of the finest Uh, boxes i've seen coming out of the indian yeah setup mm-hmm. in a while i mean and i'm including guys like amit uh mm-hmm. vikas all of, all of these guys who I, i don't want to go into vijinder and like back in yeah. the, into the old stuff uh, but but a really fine looking boxer with mm-hmm. great footwork and perhaps she needs to do some work yeah she i think her body movement and and her head movement and things need to improve quite a bit mm-hmm. so perhaps some of these trials and these competitions will also do good for her yeah of course it does as as uh, the more the competition the better and also lovelina i mean she won a medal but if you look at she becoming a world champion or olympic champion that should be the next target yeah. for her as well yeah. right so yeah. uh, she lacked i mean she lost against it tremendously powerful turkish boxer yeah. and she lost physically yeah uh she tried to fight so uh, that aspect has to be developed power yeah. in a in a uh, yeah. in a game yeah. and otherwise she has shown signs that she is an intelligent boxer yeah. she can change tactically yeah. mid bout even absolutely so yeah. she has tried that she has tried that in the losing course also at the olympic game so uh the more the fight happens the better and it 
the same thing with Mericom. If at all an unbiased system is in place for the trials, then it's mm. perfect for Indian boxing. Mm. You need a senior pro who is as wily as they come yeah. with all those experience and, yeah. and push the youngsters. And if yeah. the youngster can't beat a mm. by boxing, then more yeah. Than yeah, yeah. More yeah. So that's what I used to talk about yeah. uh, any of the senior pros mm. that, that that were lingering on. Mm. Like if the youngster can challenge them, then mm. that's that's poor for the sport. Boy. That's, yeah. that's your problem as well. Yeah. But it has not always been unbiased. Mm. As you know, boxing's yeah. judging is pretty subjective. Subjective, yeah. <laughs> subjective is the is a very diplomatic way to use it. But yeah, <laughs> biased then. <laughs> biased. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's the scenario. So it's an update. So last time we discussed quite mm. a bit about it, and we had promised mm. the viewers that we will mm. give an update on this thing. Mm. So it's pretty clear cut now. There's no games yeah. involved. Yeah. There will be a selection trial whenever that is scheduled to happen depending on the world championship. Mm. We could obviously go on for another couple of hours on just how boxing, at least at the amateur level, is ranked and who wins and who loses. But we won't. Uh, well, mean, at, the, <laughs> at the amateur level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. If he's getting into pro boxing, then that's a whole other game altogether. Uh, but that'll do it for us from Leslie and me. Thank you very much for watching. You've been watching Playthings of Alien Forces. This is News Click. You can check out all of our stories on newsclick.in. Follow us on all the social media channels. Uh, and we'll be back again, hopefully, at our appointed slot next time this week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.